Hey, Tony here. Today I've got a special guest that's going to be joining me and we're going to give our five recommendations of some titles from the Criterion Collection that we think that you might like to have in your collection. So I've got David from the Film Collector Archive um, channel who's going to be joining me. So please stick around. So it's good to have you, David. Um, would you like to introduce your channel for everybody that doesn't know you? Yeah, and uh, th thanks for having me on the channel, Tony. Um, I am Film Collector Archive. My name is David. I run the Film Collector Archive YouTube channel. Um, so you can just search it up there, and I'm always there doing unboxing videos, and mo mostly unboxing videos, but uh, other content on there as well. And I do a lot of uh, letterbox. I know you do too. Yeah. Um, so I'm on there as FC archive, uh, film collector archive was already taken. So <laughs> yeah, Someone... I'll have your links. I'll have your links down below so people can find you. Yeah. Plus yeah your Instagram, so... Instagram also. Yep. And film collector archive on Instagram. Um, I have jumped over to threads as well for those that are kind of yeah. playing with that, but yeah, I mean, Instagram between Instagram uh, letterboxed and YouTube, you'll get everything that I'm publishing. So, okay, great. So, we're going to go over five recommendations from each of us, and I'm going to try not to include any recommendations that I've done in the past. So, uh, since you're the guest, I'm going to let you go ahead and go first. So, what would be the first title that you would recommend? Yeah. So, I, I had five titles kind of jump out at me, but um, kind of when I was looking through the collection, because I know. We've done some Criterion videos together. I, I hope that I'm not repeating anything. I don't think I am, but I, I do apologize if I am. This I'll, one I know I'll, I'm... I'll remember. I'll, I'll let you know because I'll remember. Will you? Okay. I think I will. Yeah. Uh, this one I definitely have not gone over before. Um, this is uh, my newest addition to uh, my Criterion collection. And this is a film that, for whatever reason, has evaded me for uh, many years. I've, I've, I've never seen it. So this is a first-time watch and just an incredible film. This is from uh, Ridley Scott. This is uh, Thelma and Louise. Oh, yes. Um, Have yeah, you had a chance so, to watch it? Yeah. So, yeah. so I've never seen the film, and... It's one that uh, my wife has talked about here and there. You know, she'll kind of quote lines from the um, from the movie, and and it's just one that I've never seen. It's always kind of been in, you know, I, I've always known, you know, Thelma and Louise, but mm -hmm. have never seen it. And I and I didn't realize actually that it was a Ridley Scott film. So that you know also was news to me. And I'm a big Ridley Scott guy, more for I guess his sci-fi work, obviously Alien and and um, you know, Blade Runner and, you know, some of my all time favorites. But I have to tell you, this is this is one of those films. I was telling my wife this. Every once in a while, I'll watch a film that I'm I'm really sad. I'll never have the opportunity to watch it for the first time again. Yeah. And this is one of those titles. This was an absolute masterwork from Ridley Scott, Gina Davis, Susan Sarandon, mm -hmm. obviously here on the cover are just phenomenal. It, it's yeah. a phenomenal film. Um, you know, great. Uh, it's it shot really beautifully. And, and you know, and this really connected with me in terms of the landscapes that they, that they shoot in. Um, I live in Arizona and so I'm a, I'm a desert guy and this is, um, you know, not it. Well, I think it, uh, at one point, maybe they hit Arizona. I, I've seen the film once, like I said. Right. Um, anyways, but th there's a, you know, oh, in fact, yes, of course they do because of the finale of the film. Yeah. <laughs> Correct myself right there. Uh, but yeah, just the landscapes that they film in are absolutely beautiful. Um, the story itself is really compelling. I kind of knew very loosely mm -hmm. what the film was about, but not any kind of detail so i didn't know quite what the inciting incident was that kind of you know put them on the run so to speak yeah and you know and that was really um i, I have to be honest it, it kind of felt more to me like a coen brothers film than it did it, it does than it did like a ridley scott film because again i'm 
you know, I'm thinking more sci-fi stuff from Ridley Scott, but um, it felt like the Coen brothers were there kind of working with him all throughout. And, and, and I mean that, you know, with the highest respect, because I love right. Coen brothers films. Um, but just the, the interaction between Thelma and Louise, and then you've got, you know, a young uh, Brad Pitt in there, you know, coming in and causing trouble. And, um, you know, there's just a great pedigree to this film, you know, behind the camera and in front of the camera. Um, but the two leads, you know, again, Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon are just phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and it, it's one of those films that just, it was instantly on my all time favorites list. It's like, oh, that's good. I watched, uh, you know, I've seen it once, but I feel like having seen it once and engaging with it the way that I did, uh, I feel like I've seen it 50 times. It's like it, it just instantly kind of made that way, made its way onto my my all time greats list. So really what, happy to have this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What was the release date in the spy number for that one? Yeah. So this is from uh, 1991 and this is spy number. You know, it's a newer one again. So 1180, 1180. Oh. Um, and I, I did immediately, you know, this is another sign that it was, you know, a film that I really connected with. I immediately went through the entire supplement package, oh, yeah. read the the book. I mean, immediately. <laughs> I, I watched the film at night, and so it was the next morning. I just popped the extras disc in, read through the book, and, and uh, you know, Criterion really hit a home run here. I... I firmly believe this is their best release of the year thus far. Um, you know, I don't have every title they've released this year, but I, you know, from what I've seen, this is the best thing to come from Criterion in 2023. Just spectacular. Good. That's good. I, I, I picked that one up also. I've seen it. I saw it when it was released in the theater. I saw it then and I've seen it one time since then. So I'm really looking forward to checking that one out. Well, and the I'll say too. In fact, I can't remember what the source of the yeah. So they have a new 4K digital restoration, um, supervised by Ridley Scott. Um, it doesn't say if they, you know, sourced the original camera negative or what the what the source was there, but it, it looks fantastic. I mean, it really, you know, again, the landscapes that they shoot in, it, it really captures, yeah, you know, kind of the essence of you know the desert and and you know, everywhere they shoot. So it looks, it looks really good. Well, good. That's a good selection. So my first <clears throat> selection will be Moonstruck. I don't oh. know that I've ever spoken about this one, but I really enjoyed this one. Um, this right here is from 1987 and spine number 1056. Of course it stars Cher and Nicolas Cage, um, Olympia Dukakis. Yep. Um, just a really great cast. And what I like about, have you ever seen this one before? I have, yeah. Yes. So what, what do you like about this particular film? What, what would you be able to say about uh, it? Well, I mean, it's it's really lighthearted. I mean, I, I, I guess it falls in that category of, um, you know, chick flick, if you, you know, yeah. romantic comedy. I mean, if you want to put it in that category. Uh, but it's really lighthearted. I mean, it's got some, you know, heavier themes that come into play there that I I you know, I, I wasn't really expecting, um, but the film goes a few different places, you know, with, uh, you know, some more dramatic elements, some familial, you know, kind of drama. But I think the, you know, the lead performances there shares wonderful. She's really beautiful in that film. And, she is. and Nicholas Cage is always, you know, kind of dorky to begin with, but, um, you know, I, I still enjoy his performance um, and yeah, just kind of a, it, it almost has like my big fat Greek wedding. It does. It kind of has that vibe vibe. Yeah. She kind of goes through a transformation of when you first meet her in the film, she's, you know, she's kind of, I don't know. She just progresses. She goes from like a old maid type spinster type character Right to this woman who fixes herself up and fixes her hair and yeah, um, and just falls in love and I really just like the transformation, um, and I really liked her chemistry with Nicolas Cage too. I thought that was really good. Yeah, no, I, I think the on she's smart, she's sassy, she's sarcastic, yeah. um, she's Italian. It was yeah. just great. Yeah, 
yeah it's uh no it, it's an enjoyable watch it's one of those that you can kind of watch you know anytime you don't necessarily um it, it has some of those again heavier elements to it but it's one that you can kind of sit down and just pop some popcorn and and enjoy yeah and she know, won kind of... the she won the oscar that year for her performance oh did she oh i did not realize that yeah i believe she got best actress for that performance if i'm not mistaken oh that's awesome so with moonstruck it does have a really nice i, I love the cover art that they've done and of course it comes with a booklet mm -hmm. a disc art i think that looks really great um so i really enjoyed this one so david what would be your next selection yeah okay where do i want to go here okay so i'll I'll, I'll go with my other digipack um you know kind of box set here um now this is one that you because this was some big big news that came you know when this announcement was uh first made um and this is the uh wally -E, uh oh yes 4k disc in this nice you know did digipack presentation now you and i um had a discussion about this on was that my your, channel? I think it was on your channel. Yes. Yeah. On, yeah. Where we discussed this, uh, you know, criterion making a Disney, you know, slash Pixar mm -hmm. announcement. What could this possibly mean? Um, you know, and this is, you know, up, up until this point, I mean, this is the only Disney, you know, Pixar title we've seen enter the collection. And, and I don't know, I, I don't know if there's anything else to come of that. Um, regardless of whether or not that is a relationship that continues, we got a really great, release here from yes. um you know andrew stanton's uh wally -E. now this is kind of tied for first place for me for my favorite pixar film i love this and the original toy story just because it was so um you know i was 11 years old when toy story hit theaters and it was just mind-blowing to me i mean it's still mind-blowing to me to be honest the you know the work that goes yeah. into these films and just the you know, the character, you know, that's, that they're able to, uh, you know, put across the screen with, you know, just the amazing character design and music. And, you know, I, I love how fun and heartwarming and thought provoking their films are. And, um, you know, Wally -E is one of those. I mean, it, it, it makes you, um, it makes you think it's not just, you know, a, a kind of a fun animated movie. There's, mm -hmm. you know, again, There's a theme yeah yeah you know some heavier themes here to you know to kind of contemplate but um i i love how involved andrew stanton was with this release i guess he's a big criterion fan and so i i think he went you know to kind of advocate for you know the film and it you know deserving to be in the collection and and really wanting to have that relationship with um you know with criterion and so i'm glad that you know, I, I don't know what kind of red tape he had to get through, you know, getting that, you know, approved through Disney or whatnot, but I'm glad that they were willing to play ball, Yeah. Uh, you know, at least for this release. But, you know, one reason I love this, not only for the great, um, you know, 4K presentation here, because it looks phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a 4K digital master, you know, obviously the film's done digitally. Uh, and so... Um, you know, the transfer from the, you know, the master looks just pristine. Um, but this is uh, just an absolutely stacked release. Um, I was most excited, though, in the supplements here to see that they carried over because Disney, you know, kind of in their studio release of the film on Blu-ray and and DVD. And, and I know they've got a 4K release as well. Uh, there is a documentary called The Pixar Story from 2007. Uh, directed by Leslie Iwerks, the daughter mm -hmm. of of Iwerks, the co-creator of Mickey Mouse, of course. Um, her uh, documentary uh, got ported over here, and so and that's just one of you know many many supplements mm -hmm. that are that are included on here, and th and that's a documentary that I've seen oh probably five or six times since wow. it was since it was released. I love. If, if you're a fan of animation or even kind of a passing fan of animation, um, it's an absolutely essential documentary. And so for me, even just that documentary is kind of worth the price of admission to be able to have on, on 
you know, physical media. Yeah. Um, but you get so much more and there's a lot of, you know, kind of short programs here, like a lot of behind the scenes stuff. You go to the kind of the Pixar archives and stuff and Andrew stands kind of pulling out, you know, original sketch materials and, and things like that. So it's, it's really engaging in the extra features that they include here. And then I, I just love the, uh, you know, yeah. just the, the packaging here. And then you get, so the original working title for the film was uh, trash planet. Mm. And so you get the, you know, the working title uh, there on the cover here. And then it's just, you know, one of the great, uh, one of the great, uh, you know, booklets that Criterion's produced. And then you have the, you know, the discs in here, but ju just a really, a really fun release. And I'm, I'm a big advocate for animation in general. I'm always looking to add, you know, especially more like this is not obscure by any means, but I like adding a lot of, uh, you know, obscure animated titles to my collection. There's some cool stuff actually recently coming from, you know, like Vinegar Syndrome through like their partner label, Def right. Crocodile. Like there's some really cool uh, animation that's that's kind of surfacing these days in the physical media world. But I'm glad to see, you know, this obviously very mainstream title right. get the the boutique label treatment it's kind of a cool you know meeting of those two worlds of kind of the big studio stuff and then you know the the boutique label so what, what year did that come out and what's the spine number for this one yeah so this is uh from 2008 and the spine number is 1161 okay um and I'm gonna... so, so that's a really good deal you know for it for the 24.99 sale price point that's a really good pickup just for the supplements Oh yeah, and and like I said, even even just the documentary on there, I can't express to you how much how well made the documentary is, and so that's where I would point people first is, you know, when you pop the extras disc in, go <laughs> straight to the Pixar story. It's very very engaging, very yeah. informative. I have to and, check that out. And yeah, I mean it it discusses kind of the you know the start of Pixar, um, Ed Catmull and those guys, um, you know John Lasseter and uh you know it's, it's just a really great rich history of you know pixar so okay so my next title is his girl friday have you ever seen this one mm -hmm. yes and i've got yeah. it on my shelf yeah yes, i love this film i love a good black and white film now this has Cary grant and rosalind russell which i don't know very many films that feature her um i'm not very familiar with her as an actress but of course mm -hmm. Cary grant um, yeah. I love the story. I love, um, you know, he is her ex-husband and um, they're still involved as far as work and this newspaper that they that he runs. Um, would you like to elaborate a little bit about this film? Yeah, well, the, you know, the thing that sticks out to me, this is actually one that I've only seen once and it's when I purchased the Criterion Edition. Mm -hmm. um, but... The thing that was so striking to me about it is just the, uh, you know, the fast paced, yeah. witty, witty dialogue. It's like it does not let up for the entire runtime. And and so it's, it's, it's exhausting in a really good way. Mm -hmm. um, but I love the yeah, I love the banter between uh, Rosalind Russell and, and Cary Grant. Um, and of course, plus yeah, banter, I mean, you know, you say it's fast paced. It's like that with all the characters. It's like everybody's. Oh in a hustle. And if you think about the newspaper world, um, mm -hmm. running a paper, um, that's kind of way it is. Right. Right. Oh yeah. No. And, and that definitely comes through in, you're right. I mean, the performance is across the board, but it's just, it's just so fast paced and fun. And, you know, you have the great Howard Hawks at the helm, you know, directing this film and the cool thing, um, here is not only do you get uh his girl friday but you get the original uh the front page mm -hmm. and uh, this was also done um later with uh, jack lemon and walter Matthau under uh the direction of billy wilder um so there's uh you know several kind of iterations of this story this this film mm -hmm. um uh the I mean, th this is the best one, right? In, in, in my opinion, um, you know, and this is done in 1940, 
you know, just such a, such a wonderful era, you know, classic Hollywood, of course, mm -hmm. you know, that's the, really the era of, you know, film noir and, um, you know, just honestly, I mean, if, if I had to pick, you know, favorite, uh, eras of film, the 1940s is it's right there near the top for me. Yeah. Um, but just great, great performances, great direction. And, and yeah, just a really stacked release here. You know, you get the double feature with the front right. page. I love, then... they, I love it when they add a different film included with it. I think that's always a good little bonus. It's like you're getting two films for one price, which is great. Well, and we need to comment too on the, the fun, uh, you know, yeah, newspaper, newspaper style. Yeah. You know, the this is more of the leaflet, not a booklet, but but you get this really fun, uh, you know, newspaper style leaflet here included. So yeah. Criterion, you can tell they had a lot of fun with this one, I think. Yeah, so th like you said, this right here is from 1940, and um, it's by number 849, and it's only a 92 minute film so it's really easy to watch it goes by so fast and there's a lot of details that you're kind of following throughout the film so it really does keep your interest i like that oh it I, the runtime just rips by it really does yeah 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 so what would your next selection be yeah so i got three more here let's go with uh, this is spy number 811 from 1960 and this is a film by Kaneto Shindo and this is The Naked Island oh wow see I have not seen that uh, this is really spectacular so I'll, I'll kind of borrow off of the, the back here um, director Kaneto Shindo's documentary like and it's very documentary like Dialogue-free portrayal of daily struggle is a work of stunning visual beauty and invention. It's basically this family um, that, you know, works the land. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they're, they, they work with their hands for a living. And, and um, what I love about this is, yeah, I mean, you're basically watching a silent film. Um, but it's one of those, and there, there's a few examples of this in the Criterion Collection where um, in fact, if I had to come up with an example, something to compare it with, you know, at least a little bit would be, uh, the film Antonio Gaudi, yeah. um, which I, I I've recommended before on my channel. I'm, I'm certain I have because I love that film, but that's, that's more of a contemplation on architecture and art and how humans interact with those things mm -hmm. um but it's it's totally dialogue free this is another dialogue free oh is film. it and and it's just and it's just something there's something about this type of film that's just very meditative and there's something about seeing people in their kind of normal everyday life and especially when it's something so different than what you're used to doing kind of right. day in and day out um I, one reason I love the Criterion Collection is I love exploring other cultures. Um, you know, and this is a culture so distant from my own, you know, that it's it's just really eye-opening and, and again, very, you know, something that at least for me, I, I get this um, kind of semi, you know, spiritual sense of what the director is trying to portray. And, and it becomes a very kind of spiritual almost experience watching uh you know this family work the land and just their their day in and day out struggle of you know earning a living and kind of you know keeping their family together and and uh and so yeah so it, so it is a true documentary i mean those are not actors it's real they, no so so it's a uh no do documentary like and so i think um yeah, and I honestly I don't know the uh just trying to see if it makes any more mention. Um when you when you watched it, did it feel realistic? Yeah, like oh, documentary? oh, I mean it, it it feels like you're just like there's cameras there just you know watching a family for yeah. an hour and a half. And what year was that put out? Uh, nineteen sixty. Yeah, so that would be something that I could see happening. 
Yeah. So to answer your own or to, to answer your question, I don't know. Uh, I don't know enough about this film. I, I've, I've seen it once and I, and I did. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't know enough about this to know if this was an actual, you know, family that they filmed with, or if this was just strictly, you know, actors on film. I think it's probably the latter, but um it it comes across beautifully on screen i mean it's very uh you know very documentary like um but just i i love that there's no dialogue that allows you to just kind yeah. of take in take in the you know the action of what's happening on screen and just the you know really the the beauty of the landscape that they're in and um it's yeah, so no narration or anything no wow. and it no and and it's it's really, really well done. This is a runtime of 96 minutes. And so again, it's not, you know, a, you know, an extra long runtime or anything like that, but, you know, and filmed in, in black and white. Um, and this, yeah, again, this is spine number 811. It comes from a high definition digital restoration. And from what I remember, you know, looks great. I mean, there, there was no, no complaints from me in terms of how the film looked, but uh, from a transfer standpoint, but, um, you you know, I need to check that one out. A, a very high recommendation for me on this one. So you get the little, you know, booklet in here. Yeah. Um, not, not really, uh, too heavy on supplements. You get an audio commentary. Um, and then there's a, oh, actually, do you know what? I don't think I did watch this. There's a new appreciation of the film by actor Benicio del Toro. Oh, really? A uh, new interview with film scholar Akira Mazuta Lippet trailer, and then an essay from Hayden Guest. I thought I had watched through the supplements on here, but I don't remember uh, watching anything with Benicio Del Toro talking about the film. So, um, you know, a few good supplements to look at on here as well. So my next selection is going to be All That Heaven Allows, um, a Douglas Sirk film. You've never seen this one before? I have not. Have, have you ever seen any of the Douglas Sirk films? Uh, I don't know that I have seen, because uh, I know Magnificent Obsession right. mm -hmm. is in there as well. I have not. I'd have, I'd have to go look at his filmography to see off the top of my head. I don't know if I've seen any Douglas Sirk films. Oh, I highly recommend this one. Now, this right here is from 1955. It's 89 minutes. It's by number 95. And it stars Rock Hudson and Jane Wyman, um, yep. who also star in another Criterion release. Um, like you just said, Magnificent Obsession. Yeah. Um, it's a really good story on this one. But she is a widow, and he is her gardener. And they kind of um, have like a little love affair, and um, she's very well off. She's got a lot of money. And just a really good story. I would highly recommend you check this one out. And it just looks beautiful on the screen, too. And then on the inside, um, you know, you talk about really good colors. This right here has a really fall look about it. Oh, yeah. Very vibrant Technicolor. Um, but I think people really enjoy this one. Yeah. You know, and that's one. It, I got to be honest. It's been on my, like, that magnificent obsession. It's two of those that have been on my list for years like those ones that you kind of see everybody has those that they kind of see every sale and right and like oh yeah i need to pick that up and then you have other titles that kind of take over that that for me is those two douglas Sirk films so yeah. one day i i will i will watch them <laughs> um it it's uh he's known for his more melodramatic uh yeah. films i know that and yeah magnificent obsession are kind of the the poster child for melodramatic films, the right, 1950s. Exactly. So I'm, I, I would, uh, I would most definitely check those out. I think you would enjoy it. Yeah. What would be your next recommendation? Okay. So I, I picked this kind of for a funny reason. I, I, I love the film, but I remember you logging this one on letterbox as a half star. <laughs> oh, okay. So let's see what it is. Um, and and I, I don't know maybe this is a call to oh you I know, think I may know what it is already ha, have uh, you have you checked this out again this is a I have a, not I already know what it is th so this is a filmmaker that I I I'm really I I'm really 
intrigued with her work. Um, and, and this is a director I'm, I'm definitely going to continue to watch, but um, this is from 2006 spine number 1000. Oh, I didn't realize this is after 1000, 1008, 1008. And this is Kelly Reichardt's old joy. Yeah, um, you know, I actually had Old Joy right here beside me. But, oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I, I definitely need to give it another shot, but I, I look forward to hearing what you're having to say about it. Yeah, so so this is a film from Kelly Reichardt. If you're those that aren't familiar with her, um, you know, definitely look up her work. I mean, she's she's a very um her films like the the premise with her films can be very simple like this one is kind of a so two friends reuniting and it's kind of the um uh you know their their kind of transformation over time their friendship over time changing as they advance in life mm -hmm. um and you know they one of them is kind of settled down and he's got, uh, you know, the wife and the house and the, you know, he's, he's kind of more settled, but you can tell, uh, you know, there might be, you, you're, you're not sure on how happy he is. The interaction between him and his wife isn't the greatest, um, you know, and he's one of his buddies who's a lot more, you know, kind of free willing, not, you know, tied down or anything like that wants to go on a a uh, an overnight camping trip and so there's mm -hmm. kind of the awkwardness of him talking to his wife and and you know about going on the overnight and then you know it's yeah. it's you know even when they're on the trip you know he's talking to her a few times or she's calling and and his buddy's just kind of you know rolling his eyes like oh come on you know a lot, a lot um, of a lot of the stuff that I remember was it was they were in the car a lot. Yeah, well, and that's I mean because this is shot in the Pacific Northwest, which mm -hmm. is near and dear to my heart. I used to live in Oregon, mm -hmm. um, and so it's just beautifully shot. Uh, and the music is fantastic. It's very minimalist in terms of the music that's that's used, but I love their you know these two friends. I love their interactions and kind of. There's some really, you know, kind of awkward moments between the two of them, but um, it it's one that, for whatever reason, just hit me really, really deep. Really. And 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 Kelly Reichardt, she has this way of uh, of doing that. Like she speaks to my soul on like this deeper, you know, this deeper level. Was this her first film? Um. So in terms of this being Kelly Reichardt's first film, I, I believe this was early in her filmography, but I think she had uh, works that um, uh, predated 2006, um, may maybe one or two films. But uh, <laughs> so this film is a 73 minute runtime, oh. um, you know, so a very short film, but for me, you know, it, it, it uses every minute of that time to kind of portray this very it's a very soft spoken story it's not anything that's right kind of you know shoved down your throat it's very quiet and um you know i just love i love human pieces that uh you know focus on relationships and you kind of again see the uh you know how they're like you have to kind of imagine how their relationship uh, used to be. And then you see how it is now just that they're, you know, kind of well into adulthood and, mm -hmm. and life is happening. And um, yeah, it's really just a slow paced. It's very slow paced. Um, yeah. Which is probably why I didn't really get into it, but I'm definitely looking forward to checking that one out again, because like you said, it's a really short run time. It would be a, probably a pretty easy watch. Yeah, maybe I just wasn't in the right mind frame when I watched it the last time. Well, and and this is another one, kind of like I'm bringing up with Thelma and Louise. You know, this landscape is a lot different than mm -hmm. the deserts of you know Thelma and Louise. This is very, you know, lush green. You know, Pacific Northwest. Um, 
you know, and so that's that's the other thing. This is the type of film if you if you go into it just kind of letting the atmosphere kind of wash over you and and you know just kind of commit yourself to it. I, I don't know. I, I I feel like it's it's one that you might have a changed opinion on if you um if you give it another chance or, or you know or it might not change. I mean, there, there's filmmakers that we just don't connect with, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Um, but Kelly Reichardt is one. Uh, you know, there's another one of her films in the collection called Certain Women. Yes. Uh -huh. And it's got Laura Dern, uh, Michelle Williams. Um, uh, and then, uh, sorry, I'm uh, Kristen Stewart. Um, and there, there's one other actress in there. And I, I don't recall her name, but she has a lot of interactions with, uh, like her interactions are with Kristen Stewart's character. And there is this one particular moment in that film, and I won't elaborate, but this one particular moment in that film that just ripped my heart so clean out of my body. It was like, it, it was a, almost like a physical experience of just like your heart shattering for someone else. Wow. And, you know, and I got that watching that film. Funny thing is I was not impressed with the transfer from Criterion on that film. And so I'm hoping that they have a, a like a new 4K restoration. Oh, that would like, be good. Because I actually, I actually ditched my copy, my Criterion copy, because the uh, the transfer just was not great. Yeah. Um. And so I was like, oh, okay, I, I kind of have it bookmarked in my mind. Like, as soon as a yeah. 4K restoration is done, like I'm right there. Yeah, because I've but, heard different people talk about that film, but I just never, I've never checked it out. It, it, it's another one i'll tell you it's very slow yeah. uh you know and there's and, and i can see you know the i can see the reviews without even looking at them you know nothing happens in this movie you know kind of a thing and, and you can almost make that same case for old joy although i would i would personally disagree but i can see how people you know might you know come about it go about it that way but yeah um I don't know. There's something about Kelly Reichardt that is just uh, that just really connects with me. I think she really understands uh, human relationships and just the way that she puts that on screen. It it, it just feels so uh, true to life, like so authentic and so um, honest. I guess is is what I would say. Did you want to show the inside of that package just to give people a look? Yeah, so there's the there's the inside. Um, oh, something else interesting too, and this is actually a, a proper, you know, booklet, not a oh, leaflet, okay. yeah, or whatever. So you know, you get that Pacific Northwest. I mean, it's just really, really beautifully shot. And this is kind of a, you know, full, um, or I mean, this is you know, artwork, not a photograph. Uh, yeah. Something else about. Kelly Reichardt's films is her um, uh, her dog is in all of I, I haven't seen all of her films mm -hmm. but I believe her dog is in all of her films oh wow um, and so you know that you know that, that's just kind of a neat little yeah, that is know, neat. Tit, tidbit but but yeah you know Kelly Reichardt's got that X factor in, in my opinion okay my next selection is Magnificent Obsession Oh, of the search film. There I know we we've go. been kind of talking about this one. Um, this is a little bit of a different story. You know, the the other one, um, All That Heaven Allows, um, Rock Cousin was playing the gardener, kind of meek and timid. And in this one, he plays the playboy, rich, um, obnoxious. And what happens is this is really more like a soap opera type film. Um, it's got a lot of melodramatic moments in it. Mm -hmm. um, he wrecks his boat, which in turn causes her husband to not get the um, medical attention that he needs at that time. And so they they take care of Rock Hudson's character first. And then by that time, her husband passes away because of his injury. Mm. And then a lot of melodrama. But yeah. really, a really good film, a really good story. Um, this right here was done the year after. Actually, this right here was done first. This right here was the first film. Um, 
featuring the two of them. And it was done in 1954, and it is spine number 457. And then um, All That Heaven Allows came out the following year. So they did a lot back then, a lot but of great turnaround for these films. All, all That Heaven Allows, though, had the earlier spine number. Yeah, as far so as... That, so I, I'm not exactly sure how these spine numbers work. Um, is yeah. it because Gautier released it at a certain time? Yeah, yeah. So they would have first, even released. even though the film came out prior, you know, prior to the other one. Yeah, I guess they released the other one first. I mean, they they might not have had rights at that time right. to release it or whatever. So, also a good thing about this particular release is the fact that it does come with two discs, two films. So you have the original, and which is an older film, and then oh, cool. of course you have the new one, which I think is pretty cool. I do think I watched a little bit of the original. Um, I don't remember much about it, but I definitely preferred the Rock Hudson, I'm Jane Wyman version of it the most. It's, it's always great when they give you a double feature, like we were talking about with His Girl Friday, and right. Um, yeah, it's always a, it's always a nice bonus when you get another film. My director approved sticker. I usually cut it off nice. the package and slide it into the sleeve. Nice. Um, because I always like to. Anyways, I like to see that on my releases a lot of people will see my releases and they'll think oh you haven't even opened it up yet but it, it's been open i just kind of put these inside yeah yeah if, if they usually for me if the director approved sticker has the director's signature right i'll i'll usually actually take it off and i'll stick it to the or will you like i'll find a good spot for it and then i'll i'll actually stick it on there um i might need to try to start doing that well, one thing though, I'll, I'll tell you the new 4K releases from Criterion, those silver stickers, mm -hmm. they are nasty to try and they get off. Like off. The, the glue on the back of those is like 30 times stronger than yeah. the, the blue stickers. So yeah, I just that clip around them and just slide them in the sleeve. And that would work better with the 4K stickers. Yeah. You will not be able to. It's really nice to be able to identify which ones are 4K and which ones are not. Yeah. yeah. But it makes me want to dig more into Douglas Sirk to figure out what else he has done oh yeah no for sure i yeah at, at some point i will definitely be visiting those films yeah so what would be your next selection so my my next and last selection um you know and, th and this is someone uh that I, I i'm not i'm not used to as a uh director but he's in the director's chair here and this is albert brooks and julie haggerty in lost in america oh um so I've this is that. this is from uh 1985 runtime of 91 minutes and this is uh spine number 887 um this is one i'm, I'm surprised so you said you haven't seen this i have not no this is one i felt like you probably would have seen in the theaters in the 80s like it's really? it the, the I, image I, looks very familiar but you know even shopping through the criterion selections at the store I yeah. never come across that title. Okay, well, I'm gonna venture to guess that this is one that you would have an absolute blast with. Like, oh wow, I, I think this has the Tony kind of stamp of approval on it. So, Austin, easy, America, easy recommendation from from me to you personally, okay, and and anybody that likes, you know, just good, um, you know, I mean, I, I'll say 80s comedy because it was made in 1985, but it's just a good comedy in general. Um, Julie Haggerty in this is hilarious alongside albert brooks so she i guess what i knew her most from growing up was uh what about bob mm -hmm. you know she plays the the wife richard dreyfus's uh, wife you know she's kind of you know silly kind of um she has a really specific sense of humor that uh you know just just the way that she kind of reacts to things and she's you know kind of kind of her physical comedy is is not, maybe not physical comedy as much as just kind of like facial expressions and stuff yeah it, it's just it comes across uh you know really well here with you know albert brooks uh as her as her counterpart but um basically they uh in this hysterical satire of reagan era values written and directed by albert brooks um, a successful Los Angeles advertising executive and his wife decide to quit their jobs and they buy a Winnebago 
and they basically, you know, hit the road. Um, mm-hmm. They've got, you know, kind of a nest egg and, and, you know, they hit the road and it's like one, you know, things go from bad to worse mm-hmm. to just absolutely awful. It's one of those types of movies. Right. And, you know, and they, you know, it kind of forces them to reevaluate, you know, their lives and, and, uh, but it's, it's very, it's very witty, very well directed by Albert Brooks. In fact, um, I've got another one of his films back behind me here on my indicator shelf, uh, modern romance also from, also from the eighties and, you know, just, just as good. Um, in fact, I'm trying to remember because I've seen these both, you know, modern romance and lost in America w- once each. And, and I watched them pretty close together and I'm trying to remember, I think I might have preferred modern romance a little bit to lost in America, but they're, they're both, you know, yeah. really, really great comedies. Um, and this is a, from a new restoration, uh, uh, restored from a 2k digital transfer and it's supervised by Brooks. And so, he did oversee the transfer here, but uh, just a really great, really great comedy. Easy recommendation if you're if you're into comedies. Yeah, I have to look that one up. You want to go ahead and show the inside of it? Yeah. So here is. Oh, sorry, the disc is upside down, but yeah. you get that fun, yeah. nice <laughs> cover of the bo- the booklet there. Well, it's more one of those one of those leaflets, but um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then there's uh, Albert Brooks there on the back. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check that one out. Oh, it, it's it's an easy Tony recommendation. I, I think you'd have a, a blast. Yeah, I've it. never heard anybody talk about it. Yeah, and this is uh, light on the on the extra features. So wow. very yeah, good. A little, little bit of extras there, but just a, a, a really good time. Really easy watch, you know, hour and a half, 91 minutes. Well, my next selection is The Brood. Have you ever seen The Brood? Mm -hmm. I have. Uh, Yeah, so this is a David Cronenberg film. Um, So many people were just talking about it. Now, if you just take a look at that cover art, it's really an odd image there. Yeah. uh, Holding a little tiny baby. Um, Just a really dark film. I don't know that I even fully understand what I, what if I fully understood what I was watching? Yeah, um, it, but it was very strange. What what did you think about it when you saw it? No, I mean it. It's bizarre for sure. Bizarre. Um, my my brother and I. Um, so my brother, he's twelve years younger than I am, but he's my he's my sibling that is, uh, you know, into into Criterion and we talk film and things like that. And so we we actually watched that together and. I, I think we were both equally kind of puzzled with that one. Yeah. I mean, it's got a real, really weird uh, vibe to it. Um, for me, Dave, David Cronenberg, I'm very hit and miss with mm-hmm. him. Um, I will say the two. So I'm looking over here. So scanners, I really like. And uh, I've got the uh, Arrow Video 4K release of Videodrome. Yeah. Um, I just recently watched uh, Naked Lunch for the first time. Oh, was that good? No. No, you didn't <laughs> enjoy it. I, well, I mean, I'm the same way. Did you have you seen Crash? I have not seen Crash. Yeah. It, yeah, they're, yeah. they're really so out of all of his films, yeah, they're they're all so very different, also. And this was different. This right here was really I don't know. I don't even know what it's almost like a fever dream trying to figure out well, yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Um, what What's the, Oh, and it's escaping me. Of course, Oliver Reed. Yeah. Oliver Reed. Is that yeah, what see, a performance he gave? Yeah. And, and, and I'm not, and I'm not saying it wasn't, you know, like a really involved performance, but I, for whatever reason, I have never liked Oliver Reed. Yeah. He's one of those actors for me that for some reason, I just, I can't, I can't find a good entry point with him where I can kind of, I don't know, get, right. get, get to know his work a little better, but I've only seen uh, a few of his films. This is, of course, this is one of his standout performances just because of the subject. And yeah, yeah. it well, was a I mean, very weird movie. 
Well, because I mean, you're and you're talking Cronenberg, and so there's you know body horror is kind right. of his, his calling card. But yeah, um, yeah, not not one, not one that I plan on revisiting. Naked Lunch is definitely not one I plan on revisiting. That left me really wow puzzled. It'd be interesting to read the source novel on Naked Lunch. Um, but man, did I just not. Connect that you, do not rec- you do not recommend that one, do you? I, not not personally, I don't. Um, but yeah, scanners. If I had to pick a favorite, I think it'd be it'd be scanners and then Videodrome. Hmm. Um, that's really as far as I go. I think that's all I have on my shelf from Cronenberg. Um, now his son Brandon. Yeah. Uh, got some good stuff out there. He's doing he's doing some things. What's the Oh, the uh, possessor. Yes, definitely. Yeah, sorry, my I had a brain fart there. Um, possessor, I thought was fantastic. It was. I enjoyed it. I would, and, and I I need to get that one. I don't have that one on my shelf. I just watched it on um, Hulu or you know streaming somewhere. Um, I would most certainly bring you know that into the collection. But man, those Cronenbergs—they're yeah, uh, they got some very unique ideas. <laughs> stories yeah but, so, um, um, as far as the packaging yeah. like i said it's it, it's got some very interesting artwork and then here's the inside mm. um it's got like a little it's a poster and if you think the film is interesting well i mean i yeah. don't know what to say about that <laughs> And then, of course, it has all of this with blood splatter and everything on it. Yeah, and and see that that leaflet style, I really um, not a fan of. No, like the poster styles like that, I'm not a fan of. Yeah. So this yeah. title is actually from 1979, spine number seven seven seven. Um, I don't know. I I, I would love it if people would at least check it out one time just to yeah. get an idea. You know, you might like it, you know, compared to some of the other Cronenberg films. If you like Cronenberg, this is definitely one that you would want to have in your collection. Oh, sure. I, yeah. I think if I was to say, uh, I mean, I know I'm biased because it's maybe my favorite, but I, I really do think scanners is a good entry point for Cronenberg. Yeah if you're going to kind of get your feet wet with his work, I would go scanners first and then, you know, kind of branch out from there. Yeah. In my previous episode with Al, he, he brought up scanners and talked a little oh. bit about it. So that was a very interesting title. I've got it in the collection, but I've actually never seen scanners. So that's oh. one that I definitely need to check out. I, yeah, I, I bump the bump that up your list. I, I think that's an enjoyable film yeah. personally. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to speak with me about your recommendations. Um, I've had you on my channel several times and I've been on yours a couple of times, but I really do enjoy talking about the Criterion Collection with you. You got some really good discussion points and you are so much better than I am at elaborating on these films that you've seen. Yeah. So I really do appreciate you taking the time. Do you have anything coming up on your channel anytime soon? Um, so as per usual, uh, you know, I've always got more unboxing videos coming, um, at time that you and I are filming this video, um, I've got a, a big stack behind me here on the, one of the lower shelves. I'm, I'm ramping up to another orbit DVD haul video. Um, I've got, you know, just a monster stack as always of, of, uh, great titles to show there. Um, and we've got some really exciting titles coming out here, you know, leading up to, you know, kind of starting into the, you know, end of the third quarter, start of the, you know, fourth quarter of this year. So lots of great unboxing videos coming up on the channel. And then I, I would like to jump back on the in discussion series that you oh, were yeah. on, um, I filmed a couple episodes of that and, and life has kind of happened at 90 yeah. miles an hour. Happened you know, for me the last little while. So I do want to jump back into the in discussion series, but uh, definitely unboxing videos, definitely orbit DVD haul videos. And uh, I'm hoping to also jump back into some 
uh, collection spotlight videos, you know, spotlight some of the, you know, the labels that I collect from and kind of, you know, show what I've got in the collection. So we'll, we'll see always, always something in the works. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining me and I hope to have you back on soon. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to have you over on uh, film collector archive as well. Okay. Good. Thanks, David. Thanks, Tony. So I'm very happy that I was able to have this conversation with David and to see some of his recommendations. He's got some really great picks and some of these items I might want to pick up. Please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about our conversation and our recommendations because I really do enjoy reading your comments. If you like what you saw here today, please give it a thumbs up and share the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. If you do subscribe, please remember to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. If you haven't found me on my social media accounts, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and on Twitter. And if you'd like to find out what I've been watching, you can find me over on Letterboxd. I do have links below. But thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.